What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're gonna look at the date picker for KVMD and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at the date picker for KVMD. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code UG1 to get $30 off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books. One time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at the date picker. So uh, we can see, we can click this button, the date picker pops up. We can pick a date, June 10th, I click OK, and it pops up there. So that's what we're gonna look at in this video. So head back over to our code here. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other Kivi videos in this series going on, I don't know, over 50 by now. So check that out if you haven't so far. So, okay, we've got our basic Kivi starter code that we always got. I've got this file called date.py and date.kv. And this is the same code we always use. I just switched it to light instead of dark because it's a little bit easier to see the date picker with the light theme style. So, okay, so let's head over to our date.kv file. Okay, so we're gonna start with a float layout and let's start by creating a button. And let's go MD raised button and make sure this is tabbed and let's give this a text and let's say, I don't know, open date picker, something like that. And let's give this a position underscore hint and let's go center underscore X and let's give that a 0.5 and then let's go center underscore Y give that a 0.5 as well. Just stick this right in the middle of the screen. And then on underscore release, we want something to happen. And we want to call the app dot show underscore date underscore picker function. And we'll create that in just a second. So okay, that's the button. Let's also create a little label underneath. So let's go MD label. And I just want this here so that we can when we click the date thing and pick a date, we can actually do something with it. And we'll just put it back up on the screen in this label. But that'll show you how to do stuff with whatever you've clicked in the date picker. So uh, let's give this an ID of uh, date underscore label and a text of just for now some stuff, right? Exclamation point, it's very exciting. And let's give this a position hint as well. I'm just gonna copy this guy. And instead of 0.5, let's just go, I don't know, 0.95 and 0.4, push it down a little bit. So, okay, let's go ahead and save all of this. Now we need to create this function and some other functions as well. So let's head back over to our date.py file. And we first need to import something in order to use the date picker. So we need to go from kivimd.uix.picker, right? We want to import the md date picker. All right, that looks good. And then uh, let's come down here and let's define that show picker function. We also want to pass in self as always there. And so what we want to do is show the date underscore dialogue. And we want to set that equal to MD date picker, All right? So, okay, that looks good. Now let's open this thing. We want date underscore dialogue dot open. So we're also going to have to do some other stuff to, and I'll show you in a second, but I think that might be enough to just run this and see what we're looking at. So let's head over to our terminal. I'm in my C slash KVMD directory. We've got our virtual environment turned on and let's go Python date.py. And when we do, we get our app here and we can click this button and boom, this thing pops up. Now, nothing actually happens. We're, you know, if we click cancel, nothing happens. If we click okay, nothing happens, but at least it's popped up now, right? and we can actually see it. So this looks pretty cool. We can switch months here up here, it's June, July, August. We can switch years right here. Very, very cool. Uh, and uh, just that easy. Now, before we get into all of the, the mechanics of this thing, how to use it, I wanna show you one really cool thing. You can actually pick a default date. It's super easy to do that. Head back over here. Just when you pick this date dialogue thing right here, we can just pass in some arguments. So we can say year, equals 2000, uh, month equals two, uh, day equals 14. So that would be February 14th, 2000. So if we save this and run it, pull this over, now when we open it, it's February, see 214 is highlighted right here, the 14, and the year is 2000, so that's kind of cool. So you could do that if you want, or you could just leave it as the default to pick the current date, right? 
So that's interesting. So now how do we actually use this thing? So when we actually click on the thing and click OK or cancel, we want to do something with the date that got picked, right? So how do we do that? Super easy. We just come down here to where we define this thing. And I'm going to leave this default stuff here just to show you for now. Uh, yeah. But what we can do is do some binding. So let's go date underscore dialog dot bind. And we want to say on underscore save. We want to set that equal to self dot on underscore save, right? And then we can also do on cancel. So let's go on underscore cancel. And we can set that equal to self dot on underscore cancel. Right? So we're calling these two things, but we haven't created them yet. So let's come up here and actually build out those functions. So here, let's go uh, click OK. And for here, let's go click cancel. So if we click OK, let's go define. And this is going to be on underscore save. So that's what we called it down here. We're saving the date picked, I guess. Uh, so let's call on save. We also want to pass in self as always. Now this will return several different things. And I can just print out, it will return the instance, it will return the value, and it'll also return the date range. So I'm just going to print these to the terminal to show you what they are for now. And we'll play with them in a bit. We're not going to use most of these things, but I want to point them out at least. And like I said, we're going to use these. We're not going to use these all the time. I'm just going to show them to you, but we still need to pass them in here. So we need to pass in instance, value, and date underscore range. Okay, so that's on save. Now let's come down here and do on cancel. So let's define on underscore cancel. And we also want to pass in self. We also need to pass in those other things as well. Even though we probably won't be using them, we still got to pass them in. So let's go instance and value. I don't think we need to pass in the date range. So, okay, how do we use this? Well, remember, we've got this the label right here. So let's just change the label whenever we click cancel to say you canceled, right? So super easy. We can just go self dot root dot IDS dot that date label, and we can set the text equal to you clicked cancel. So, okay, let's go ahead and run this and, and see what this is. Now, this is going to be a little weird and we'll look at it, but we can at least see if the cancel worked for now. So let's run this guy. Come back over here. It says some stuff there now. If we click this, uh oh, oh, we messed up something. On underscore save. I misspelled cancel. On cancel. There we go. Okay, so that should work now. Head back over here. Let's run this guy again. Okay, so we open this, we can click cancel, it says you click cancel, All right? So easy there. Let's open this again. Let's pick the 15th and click OK. Nothing happens here. But when we close it, we can see down here, it's returning those three things. So here's the instance, here's the value. And then you can see this Python list right here. That's the that's the range. Now none of these things make sense, really. Uh, so we'll break them down one at a time. We're not going to do anything with the instance, but I'll show you how to do the value and the date range at least. So let's head back over to our code. And instead of printing this out, let me just comment this out so it'll be there and you can see it. Let's instead copy this and let's look first at the value. So instead of passing in text, we want to pass in the value. Now for text labels, these need to be strings. So we have to actually wrap this in the string function to convert it into a string. And okay, that looks good. So let's go ahead and save this head back over here, run this guy again. Now we can click this if we hit the 15th, boom, now it's 2002, the month February and 15th. And that's the value it's returning. So that's a date time, you can play around with that regular Python date time things. But uh, really, that's all there is to it. So for all intents and purposes, that is the date picker, right? That's how it works. Very easy, you click it, return the value or click cancel and do something else using those two functions. The only other real thing I want to show you is the date range. And maybe you need that, maybe you don't, but this is how you use it. So let's head back over here and come down here to this date dialog where we first define this thing. And I'm going to copy this and make another version of it. And let's comment this out. Remember, this is where we pick the default year. Instead of doing that, we can set the mode. So let's go mode equals and then pass in range. So this will return a range. And if we come up here and instead of doing value, well, let me just actually let me just copy this whole thing and do it again. Let's instead do date underscore range. 
And let me comment this out so it's still in the code. So instead, we want to return a date range. Now, this is going to return a Python list of the range, which is not super useful, but I'll at least show it to you in case you want to play around with it. So we can come up here, open the date picker. Now we can pick a range. So I want the first through the 10th. And you can see it highlights it all. That's kind of cool. You can see right here, it says June 1 through June 10. We click OK. And you can see uh, it's not formatted very well, but you can tell this is a Python list with date time dot date of these dates, right? So you could pick each individual one. It's a Python list, right? So we could do something like, uh, da, 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 where did we go here? Instead of just calling date range, we could call the first item. That's zero, right? You know how Python lists work. So if we did that, we came back here, did this again. We could go, you know, first through the 10th, click OK, and now it's just returning the first, right? Uh, and you could play around with this. You could do, you know, I don't know, an F string or something here where we did something like that. And then inside of here, put curly brackets. And then maybe a dash and then more curly brackets and we could go string and then I don't know what date underscore range and then what I don't know negative one to get the last item something like that so if we ran this and we could go the first through the tenth click okay here we have the first through the tenth whatever but it's a python list you could do all python listy type things to it however you want, I play around with it, but that's the range and that's how you use that. So that's the date picker, pretty simple, pretty cool, pretty easy to use, super fast, not a whole lot to it and uh, pretty cool. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off memberships to pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from CodeMe.com and I'll see you in the next video.